So for step 28, we're going to attach the RC unit. Uh, so what we're going to first do is put the speed controller down by double-sided tape. Then we're going to put the radio down. I won't be using double-sided tape. I'm going to be using Velcro because as you've seen me do in other uh, cars, I don't want multiple radios. I can only use one car at a time anyway. So I actually put it down by uh, Velcro and it works for me. And then we're going to attach the motor and then we're going to clean things up with the nylon bands. And actually there's something pretty cool with this car. They've actually got holes in the chassis specifically designed so that you can, you can tie everything down with these straps. So it's kind of cool. So by the end, we should have the car looking pretty clean uh, with all the cables out of the way. So I'll set this up and uh, let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is attach the speed controller to the chassis. Now they're showing you for placement, it needs to go right there uh, at the end. And there's a little ridge, which I'm actually gonna put the controller as far back as I can. And then we'll be able to clean this sort of stuff up later. But what I've done is I've pre-cut the double-sided tape. So we'll stick on some of this to one side. There we go, and I'll peel off the other. And now just to make sure that this goes down properly, I'm gonna make sure, yep, that it went all the way back. So there we go. There is our speed controller attached and we'll clear up the cables afterwards. Now we'll have to do the same thing for the receiver. Now, before we put the receiver down, I do want to show you this. There is a receiver box that you can use. It basically says it's an option in that it depends on the size of your receiver. Mine will work, but it will mean that you have to keep it away from this line because this is gonna fit into that hole so that this would actually sit on top and then snap into place on the backside with this part fitting into that hole. So you don't wanna put the receiver there because you won't get the box on. So if you do want to use the box, you're gonna to need to make sure that it is out of the way so that this is gonna slide on without any problems. Now, for me, it's not, too big a deal because what we'll do is I'm gonna I'm gonna stick this on here first and that's that velcro piece and I'm going to just put it on and make sure that it's pretty much out of the way so if we put it well actually let's just do it this way I'll put it in the center there and then that's gonna sit there. So, I mean, I can move this around where wherever it needs to be. And you can see that there's a an opening so that the cable could actually sit on there. But I mean, I won't, I'm not gonna snap it in because I'm not entirely sure whether I'm gonna use this box or not. Um, I probably will, and I can snap it back on and snap it off again, but obviously I still have to get the cables hooked up. But we'll just leave it like that for now. Um, but just note that if you're going to use this, just make sure that you put the receiver in a position that it's out of the way of that hole in the chassis. So now that we've got both the receiver and the ESC attached to the chassis, um, we're going to move on to cleaning up all of the wires and the cabling and of course connecting the uh, motor. So we'll do that and then we'll just sort of finish this off and we'll move on to the next step. So for the motor itself, because this is a Tamiya speed controller, we're going to go yellow to yellow and blue to green. And of course they're showing you putting in all the cables under that shock stay and then attaching it. Now the orange one, that is for the brushless system. So I'm just gonna get that out of the way for now. We're not gonna use that. And we'll just use our yellow and, and blue. So for this, we're going to want to connect the yellow to yellow. 
and the blue to the green. So there's our motor cables. So I'm just going to push that a little bit and then pull them through a little bit too. That way they're, it's a little bit closer and they're not bulky and hanging out the back end. So I'm just kind of pushing on those a little bit to bring those closer and then these will cut through to here. Now it's going to be a matter of tying these down now and we'll do the same with this orange cable because um, again we're not going to be using that. So we will strap this down. So I had to take another look at the way this is um, shown in terms of how they want the zap straps on uh, to tie everything down. I decided that's not the way I was going to do it. So I'm going to show you what I've done here. So with the motor ones, they were showing, you know, using a zap strap and, and pull them together. I'm not really seeing any reason why I would really do that here. So I'm not going to. But the one thing I have done, which I think is super cool here, uh, if you look at the steering servo, they want you to run the wire along this sidewall piece and then you strap them down with zap straps and then of course it's going up and into the speed controller. So the cable is completely out of the way, which I think is super cool. Well then I thought, well, we don't want that orange cable coming off the ESC. So I've run it down below and zap strapped it to the other side because otherwise this is sitting up here, it's gonna get dirty and if it's not gonna be used, why would you do that? So I've zap strapped it down below and now it is out of the way. So the only two cables we're concerned with are the ones coming off the motor going into there and that one isn't being used, so it's out of the way. So from my point of view, that step is pretty much finished. So we are done with step 28 and we can move on to step 29, which is the wheels.